So in the last video, we were talking about differences between the oceanic crust and continental crust in terms of their density and thickness. Now, remember, of course, that the mantle is going to be exerting a buoyancy force because it's a fluid upon which these pieces of the lithosphere are floating upon. And so the mantle is going to be forcing, by buoyancy force, these blocks of the lithosphere to stand suspended or float since the mantle has a higher density. In this case, 3,300 kilograms per meter cubed on average. Now remember, of course, that the buoyancy force will change in different places of the Earth. You're going to have hot spots and things like that and large magma plumes which will be pushing certain areas of the crust higher than other areas will be being pushed. But on average, the buoyancy force will be the same across the world. Now, of course, is the density is going to be changing. In other words, if the mass changes, that would change how much this is going to be sinking or floating on the buoyancy force because... Remember from what we talked about, that if the buoyancy force is the same, if you were to, and you have, you have a gravity act, acting backwards against the buoyancy force, if you were to increase gravity, that is, that's going to make the thing flow, flow lower into the buoyancy force until you, you reach the uh, adjustment point. We talked about that in the last chat video where we talked about how objects float, right? Now, just looking at the actual density, you would understand that if you get a block of continental crust and a block of the oceanic crust that have about the same mass, in other words, they weigh about the same, all right, you would expect the object that is denser to actually occupy less space, all right? So it means density, of course, remember, is determined by mass divided by volume. So if the mass is the same and the distance is different, the volume must be different. And that's what you see in the picture here in the top top you see that the oceanic crust much be thinner than the continental crust because it's denser. And so if you get two blocks about the same mass, it would explain why the oceanic crust is thinner. And that's one plausible explanation suggested for why you see something like this when you look at the globe. You see that the continent is very, very thick, and then you get to the ocean, which is very, very thin crust. So that five kilometer difference in thickness on average between the oceanic crust and continental crust could be attributed simply because the fact that the ocean crust is denser. But that's not exactly what happens. First of all, it's not even here, but this cannot be right because we learn about how objects float. And this is the line that represents the mantle here. And the content of crust is not as dense. We, we learned that objects which are not as dense will float higher into the liquid and will have a greater ratio of, of exposed material. And so it sh the, the difference in density is very, very... Um, minimal, but you should expect the oceanic crust to be a slightly thinner material, which which is slightly has a slightly larger ratio of material underneath than above the water. Well, in this case, the mantle. So it's both going to be thinner, and it should be sinking more into the mantle in ratio of the ratio of its size. So this cannot possibly be the look that we expect from the ocean across versus continental across when we look at the, uh, the composition of the Earth. And that's actually what scientists found to be the truth because when you study seismic waves, and those are waves which happen during earthquakes, for example, and so you see the earthquake generates a seismic wave and this wave will start traveling into the ground more and more and then finally it will hit, say, the mantle. Once it hits the mantle, the seismic wave will actually refract or change direction. And that is how we know that the mantle is there. Remember that line is called the Maho discontinuity after the first science that discovered that this pattern of change in the, in the direction of the wave because of a change in speed as it enters a denser material. Now, the thing is that when you actually study seismic waves to try to find the Maho discontinuity both behind, below the continent and below the oceanic crust, that's not what you see at all, as it should be, because we know that the, they should float different on the magma since they have different densities. Uh, not only should they have different volumes, but they also should, should float higher or lower in the, in the fluid that they're floating on. But what we actually find is something more like this. The continental crust is both higher and much lower than the oceanic crust is. The oceanic crust is going to be a lot thinner and is going to be a lot high, a lot, uh, it's not going to extend as high as the continental crust is extending. And so you see that the mild discontinuity uh, the difference between the top of the crust on the continent and the Mahu discontinuity is on average 42 kilometers, but the difference between the, the top of the oceanic crust and the Mahu discontinuity under the oceans is on average about 7 kilometers. And you see that this is actually going to create 
and they're also going to float different on the magma, and so that's going to create a difference of, of five kilometers in elevation. So, when you combine the difference in thickness and the difference in the floating pattern, you see that there it explains the difference in the elevation and the depth of the oceanic crust. But why is the oceanic crust so thick? All right, and that's kind of how we have to talk about it. now. Remember, what you see is not this one in the bottom. You do not see a continuous model discontinuity as you go deeper into the Earth. You actually see that the oceanic crust, including the sediments and the water that's above it, is only going to extend on average about 10 kilometers thick, but that the oceanic continental crust will be on average at least 30 to 40 kilometers thick. All right? And that this range here for the ocean across, just the ocean across, will range between 5 and 10 kilometers thick, and the range for the continental crust will be between 20 and 80 kilometers thick. And so you see that the continental crust is going to be much thicker. And the interesting thing is that as thick as it is above the water level, it's actually going to be below the water level as well. And so you see there's a large difference. It's almost like there's roots for every mountain. For every mountain, there seems to be a downtown that's underneath into the, into the crust. And it's actually like that. So what is actually causing this? What is actually generating this view? Now, to understand what causes this, you have to understand the idea of isostatic adjustment. And again, it has to do with the balance between the buoyancy force and density and also the gravity and the weight, right? So buoyancy versus gravity or density versus weight is what we have to talk about here. So... If you, for, for example, put a block of wood on water, it's going to float on a certain ratio. A little piece of it, for example, this, this is oak, will be 75% below the water, 25% above the water level, because the oak is 0.75 of the density of water. So the buoyancy force will act on this blo block until you have to reach that balance, balance where the buoyancy force will be enough to support the weight. And that will happen when about 75% of the block is under the water and the pressure of the water but because of the density difference will support the weight of the block. But what would happen if you were to add weight to the, on top of the block? Now you increase the density of that block. And since you increase the density, a larger ratio of what's going to be underneath versus above is going to be necessary for the buoyancy force to adjust and now support that new weight. And so that is what we call the adjustment or the isostatic adjustment that happens when you put more weight on top of a block of wood all right that's floating on water and so we call this subsidence or the act of going deeper into the float fluid because more weight is added or a higher density is added to the to, to the surface of the material that's actually floating the opposite would happen if you were to remove weight that means that the object will become less dense. It will be up, uplifted by the buoyancy force instead. So now let's think about how this happens in the continents as, it, as we talk about the crusts, all right? So if you have, for example, okay, all of this, by the way, is continental crust we're talking about here. If you got the original continental crust and you fold it, either because of tectonic plate pressure or because you add stuff to it, but if you cause a fold because you, you're squeezing it, as you see in the top picture, that means you're going to make the crust thicker. So this area right here in the middle is going to become denser. And since it became denser, all right, what's going to happen? You're going to have a thicker root too, just like the object of floating on the water. When you add density, it's actually going to be sinking underneath or subsiding. And that's what's going to create those roots or those downtons in the surface of the earth. Now, if you thin out the crust, which is what happens, for example, when a rift valley is forming, when you actually have tension is stretching this, it's going to be causing the crust to become slightly less dense in this middle region here. This middle region will become less dense. And since it becomes less dense, what will happen to the crust? It will become uplifted, right? And so the roots will actually thin out because you're going to be floating higher now because the density will be decreasing. So that means when the crust thins down, the roots uplift up. When the crust uplifts up, the roots subside down. And that's what isostatic adjustment is all about. Whatever is happening to the top will happen to the bottom as well. If you thin out the top, it will also raise up the bottom. 
if you raise up the top, it will sink into the bottom as well. So that is what it's all about. So after a long period of time, for example, look at the example of the continental shelf. The, on the continental shelf, since it's getting thinner and thinner, remember, erosion is going to be thinning out the continental shelf there right which is going to cause the crust to thin out so what happens to the bottom you are also going to decrease the root it's going to thin out because the isostatic adjustment means the buoyancy force will now push more and cause the material to actually float higher and it thins out the crust right if you add sediments to the crust for example you add more weight or let's say for example wave action actually adds more material to the content of the shelf what's going to happen well then the crust was going to extend deeper because you're going to have more material added, and so you're going to have the deeper roots. And so you see that the crust will subside when, it, when weight is added, or uplift when weight is removed. And so that's what could explain the fact of the thickness of the, of the actual content of crust being different. And the best way to think about this is, for example, let's say you have those two blocks of wood we just talked about. And they're equal size, equal weights. They're going to be floating at different equal ratios because the buoyancy force and the weight is going to be matched, right? Now, if I erode the top of block A, which means I am removing weight from block A, that means it's going to be uplifted. Buoyancy force will adjust, and the isostatic adjustment will cause uplift of the block on the left. Meanwhile, if you deposit the material that was eroded off the block A into block B, that's usually what happens. Whenever you have erosion, that material has to be deposited somewhere else. And so if that material gets deposited on block B, you increase the weight of block B and therefore its density. Therefore, therefore the ratio of how it floats is going to change and it's going to be subsided or synced in more. And though, see, now you see that when you change the weight of the cross by erosion or deposition or by folding or by rifting, you are actually changing the way that the crust looks underneath as well. All right? And that explains why the contents look the way they look. So, for example, if you look at this reference point here that's on the first picture, and it's right at the middle, right? You have a mountain there and everything, and it's right at the middle. If you erode that mountain and remove weight, what's going to happen? The whole crust will be uplifted because you have less weight. And so this isostatic uplift will drag that point higher and higher as it gets eroded more and more, which actually means that the, the downturn that you had will disappear and the reference point that used to be in the middle of the rock will actually be exposed to the surface after a while. And so that's why how rocks which are deep below the ground sometimes get exposed to the surface because of uplift followed an erosion event or something like that. Or maybe if you rift the content, remember you make it thinner, it also causes this uplift to take place, right? So you see how rock can actually be uplifted up or be exposed to the surface, even though it used to be underneath, underground because of erosion events. And this is all have to do with isostatic adjustments, all right? Now, on our last video about isostatic adjustments, we were going to explain how this actually changes the crust depending on the different events that could happen to the actual continental crust or oceanic crust, and would actually explain why the difference in thickness of those things, all right? So I'll see you then.